Hello everyone and welcome to SC Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and in this show we're going to be talking about version control. So sit back, open up your mind, and let the knowledge seep in, because SC Geek starts now. Okay, let's talk about version control. So, before we can talk too much about version control, we're going to have to talk about before version control. So, before version control, you might have a bunch of files. So, or you might have what this one file say, and you want to try something out, so you make a second version of that file. And then you say you make a, a third version, testing something out, else out. Problem with this is, you know, you don't know why you changed, you know, why you have these different versions. You just, and you accumulate these versions. It doesn't scale very well. And it's like, it, like if you change something in an earlier version, well, you don't really know what you changed when. You know, it's hard to track what changed when. And what gets even worse is if you have multiple people working on the same file, then it becomes a who changed what, when, and why. So, you know, that's why version control was invented to, you know, manage this. So we'd have a system where we could manage the versions of our files. So let's just close that out. And talk about centralized version control. So the centralized version control model is, we'll show a little diagram here. So the centralized version uh, version control model opera operates on, you know, you have one centralized server that you commit files to, and it keeps track of, you know, your various commits and the different versions of the file. And it contains all the history of the different versions of your file. So, you know, you have a file, you commit it up to the centralized version control, and that's something that's very important. The commits, when you commit something, uh, what you get with a commit is, you know, the name of the person who did the commit, when they did the commit, and a message saying what, you know, hopefully what they thought they were doing with this commit. So that, you know, when you sync down that, that file, you can, you know, look at the history and see, you know, what they thought they were doing and say, oh, you know, they thought they were doing this, but they, you know, this wouldn't fix that. Or, oh, that's why they did that. I shouldn't mess with that. And you, you get a, a much broader sense of, like, what happened between different versions because, you know, you have this history. The problem with the centralized model, though, is you have this one centralized server. If this server goes down or you don't have access to this server, you can't see any history. All you have are your synced local files. So you can't get history. You can't commit anything. You're pretty much hosed without, you know, having access to the server. Another problem is... Uh, Say you want to try something out. Now, with the centralized model branching, which is something I'll talk about much, uh, I'll talk about a little for, uh, later on, becomes very expensive because you know when you branch something, you get a whole nother copy of you know whatever you were doing. So you have you know different branches of something, which is also accessible for everyone else. Which means you know you're doubling the storage size of everyone else what everyone else has to pull down and sync because you want to try something out so and you know then you get the problem of when you do this branching merging back in which in a centralized model is usually much more difficult so you know that's kind of a problem just trying something you know out you know you can try it off locally but then you know you don't get your commit history with that. So, you know, you kind of lose out on what you could have, you know, if you had that commit history, seeing what you thought you did, when, and, you know, things along that line. So that's an another another issue is uh, say you have to, you know, you're going to release something and you have to lock down whatever you're doing 
and do the release. Well, that means that you know this person over here, this person over here can't do commits while you're you know locked for release. So basically, any changes they make, they just commu they accumulate locally without you know having that you know the the commits. So you know usually what happens is they do a big commit with you know all their changes. The problem with these big commits is you don't get a granularized history of what happened, you know, what they thought happened. It's just like, oh, I committed my changes since locking. So, you know, it's harder to see what happened. So that's kind of what the model of this, you know, centralized version control. So going off of that, um there are a lot of different kinds, uh, different products of version control. Uh, the first one, probably most notable, is CVS, which you know you can get this free open source. Uh, but at this point, it's very old, you know, in terms of uh, software, anyways, and uh, considered to be mostly legacy. There are some people who hang on to it, and you know, good for them. But it's it's kind of like you know old FTP. Uh, you know, in, in terms of age, where you know you have to specify whether a file is binary or ASCII text, and you know most people have moved on from FTP at this point, and li likewise, a lot of people have moved on from CVS. Now, uh, going off from that, um, let's talk about uh, SourceSafe, which is the Microsoft version control system. Uh, which I think most people don't use this anymore. And that from what I've heard, I've never used it. Uh, this isn't version control. Uh, this is just, you know, it's a Microsoft product and it doesn't work very well. Uh, it doesn't scale very well from what I've heard. So probably safe to say stay away from, you know, Microsoft source safe. Uh, moving on from that, uh, we have uh, Subversion, which is, uh, you know, a little bit, more modern, but you know, not quite because you know, distributed models co came after that. But Subversion in the centralized model is probably one of your best bets because one, it's free, uh, easy to use, really good tooling around it, um, and uh, it's you know, definite upgrade from CVS. So you know, Subversion a lot better in the centralized model anyway. Now. Going off from that, there's also ClearCase and Perforce. Um, from what I've heard, people who've used ClearCase is it's kind of a pain. Um, you know, it's it's very meant for bureaucracy, locking things down, which uh, very similar in Perforce. From what I've seen, it you know allows a lot of you know enterprisey level controls, and is something that for me I just don't want to see in a version control system I want to be able to commit stuff to a version control system and have it keep my commits and have access to them I don't want to see a lot of enterprisey locking things down but personal preference anyways uh, I have used Perforce and as I said very enterprisey uh, and also a lot of the you know their tools for me kind of reek of uh, Kind of like Windows ninety five or Windows three one, maybe even Windows three one style. You know, it's just it seems some of them seem very old and crufty. Some of them are good, but some of them are could use some polish. Um, but that's Proforce, and that's pretty much the centralized model. So, moving on from the centralized model, we have the, oops, the. Distributed model. So let's look at that and get a diagram up of the distributed model. So the difference in the distributed model is you no longer have one centralized repository. Everybody has their own repository and everybody can push commits or pull commits from each other. This uh, gives you a much better control of what you're publishing out to a centralized repository, which you know in the distributed model you can have a centralized repository for which is used mostly for integration. Now, one of the great things about this is anything that you could do remotely, you can also do locally. So you can do commits locally now and then push them out. So what this gives you is, say you're you know locked in whatever you know multiple bra whatever branch you have up here, 
you can do all your commits locally, and then when you know things unlock, you can then push them. And I, I, I started talking about branching a little. In the distributed model, it actually encourages you to branch and merge often. So I'll be talking a lot more about that once I get into Git because you know it's it's much easier to see. And actually, I'll show you a little bit of Git uh, in just a moment. Uh, you know, with branching and merging, uh, just on a conceptual level. So, you know, that's what the distributed model has to offer for you. Uh, is just uh, it allows you a lot more flexibility. Plus, if you don't have access to the centralized repository, no problem. You also have access to your repository, so you can see all the history throughout time. Now, with the way uh, the distributed models usually go with branching, is they don't uh, branch in the same way. They have like you know one file is usually one file regardless of what branch it's on. So you know when you do a branch, it doesn't mean you necessarily have have a duplicate copy, and everyone who you know syncs from that now has a duplicate copy as well. So it's much, you know they they typically be uh, typically are much more efficient um, in just the way they store files, it's especially in in reference to get and whatnot. So let's just get out of this and take a uh, quick detour into get and let's see we're going to go into a get repository I have a copy of get uh, actually grails core which is a open source project um, and we're going to be taking a look at a program called get k which is just a repository browser so this right off the bat probably looks way complicated to you and I will explain all of this in much more detail in other episodes but I, I kinda wanna just show you like the top half of this for now and kind of ignore all this for the moment so what this is is a, rep a version control repository and all these are are just different commits that different people you know you can see different people made these different commits at different times and these are their you know just uh, their commit messages now what you also see is this nice little graph which is you know uh, particular to get um, and maybe some of the other distributed models but you can see where someone's branched off you know they did this one commit and then they merged it back in so you know I'm only looking at one branch here but I can see where things have branched off and merged back in. And, you know, these branches could be, you know, more complicated, like a couple of commits, or they could be, you know, very complicated, you know, branching off, you know, lots of commits, lots of commits branching off that, and then merging back in, you know, eventually. So, you know, the thing is with, uh, you know, distributed model like this is you can branch off and then merge back in a lot easier. Um, not to say that you won't get merge commits, which is something we'll talk about later as well. But you know, it's usually you do it a lot more often. You know, the branching and merging, so it becomes less of a you know an issue. So you know, that's just a, a way to look at you know some of that branching there. But let's go back up for a moment out of Git and just talk about the different version controls that uh you know I know of like I've been talking about uh you know the centralized ones those are you know the most popular ones that I know of and these are the most popular distributed ones I know of there are more out there uh I'm I'm definitely sure uh but I'm talking about some of the more well-known ones and more popular ones so uh I think the first distributed version control system was uh one called Bitkeeper which was used uh originally by the Linux kernel way back when um and if you you know needed support and wanted a distributed model it was the go-to uh version control system which has kind of changed more in recent years. So uh coming off of that uh because of licensing and whatnot um Linus decided to make get and he is the you know the father of get uh which is a really great uh version control repository and I will be going much into much more depth on get in uh future tutorials so you know get is a very good uh distributed version control system 
Uh, some others are Mercurial, which uh, is very much almost like a, a direct ripoff of Get with a few tweaks here and there. Although I've heard from some of their users they've had problems with uh, corruption a lot more uh, on Mercurial. So I, I don't know about that and particularly haven't used it, but that's what I've heard from some people. Um, and there's also uh, Bazaar, which is another one which... Uh, you know, has a bizarre name, um, but I've never used that. But it seems to be, you know, have a little bit of popularity going. Similar but different than Get. So, you know, Get is pretty much the one I'm going to be focusing on in uh, the next set of tutorials going forward. So we'll be talking much more uh, depth about that, and uh, we'll go from there.